from human beings to plants and every organism in between. DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid, is a carrier of our unique genetic code and holds the instructions to life. DNA is a polymer made up of nucleotides. Each nucleotide comprises a phosphate group, a five carbon based sugar molecule where it gets its name from, deoxyribose, and one of four nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Covalent bonds join the sugar phosphate backbone and the bases pair to their complementary bases through hydrogen bonds. Complementary base pairing means that every adenine can only bond with thymine, and every guanine can only bond with cytosine. It is a sequence of these four bases that encodes our biological information, and when translated by RNA, leads to the expression of hereditary character. Because of complementary base pairing, one strand can act as a template for another. The two strands join to create the double helix that is both strong and compact. DNA replication is the basis of biological inheritance. Cells asexually reproduce to create two genetically identical daughter cells. Part of this process involves replicating their entire genome so that both cells receive every gene. DNA replication is semi-conservative. One strand is used as a template for a new strand. The two copies that are produced would each contain one original and one new strand. The maselson stahl experiment proved this, using a heavier isotope of nitrogen to determine whether the DNA was new or old. The conservative method proposed that a double-stranded molecule fashioned an entirely new one, while the dispersive method involved alternating segments of both old and new. After two generations of DNA replication, the weight of the DNA molecules refuted both of these hypotheses and proved the semi-conservative hypothesis. But how exactly does it function? DNA replication is a complex system of enzymes and proteins. DNA gyrase relieves the strain of the double helix by catalyzing negative supercoiling, while helicase unwinds the double helix at the replication fork. It separates the strands by breaking the hydrogen bonds between complementary base pairs, and each strand becomes a parental template. Single-stranded binding proteins stabilize the unwound molecule, maintaining its single-stranded state for the DNA polymerase to work. Enzyme called DNA primase synthesizes short RNA sequences called primers, about 5 to 10 nucleotides long that act as an initiation point for DNA synthesis. The RNA primers provide a 3' prime end for the DNA polymerase 3 to begin its construction. DNA polymerase can only work in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. On the leading strand, it can synthesize continuously. The polymerase attaches free nucleotides according to complementary base pairing. Free nucleotides are in the form of deoxynucleoside triphosphates and have additional phosphate groups that provide energy for the formation of covalent phosphodiester bonds in the sugar phosphate backbone. However, the lagging strand, being a 3' prime to 5' prime strand, is another story. It complicates things. The polymerase cannot work in a continuous fashion because it runs in the opposite direction, and so it synthesizes the new strand in segments called Okazaki fragments. DNA primase plants primers at intervals, at each primer, the DNA polymerase synthesizes an Okazaki fragment, moving away from the replication fork. It detaches and repeats the process. The cleanup crew is just as important. RNA primers are removed by exonuclease enzymes, and the gaps in the sequence are filled in by DNA polymerase 1. On the lagging strand, the rifts between successive Okazaki fragments are sealed by DNA ligase. This complex system of enzymes and proteins yields two identical double-stranded copies of DNA. And this is how DNA replication is the foundation of biological inheritance.